and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey. Here let's learn how to test if a certain point is inside or outside of a certain hex shape. Doing this involves a bit of math, but don't be scared, it's nothing too special. Personally, I'm not very good at math, so if I can learn this, then definitely you can too. This can be done in both 2D and 3D, I will showcase and include both methods in the project files you can download. Now if you're in a hurry, here's the 30 second answer. You first you test if the point is inside the horizontal bounds by testing against the width, then test for the vertical bounds against the height, then for the diagonals you calculate this angle and get the perpendicular direction to it, then with a certain test point you calculate the direction from this corner to that test point, and then just do the dot product between these two vectors, and that will basically tell you if this point is on this side of this line or on this side. Then you combine all those tests and you have all the logic working. Now for a more guided explanation, keep watching the video. This is the kind of thing that even if you don't use it right now, it will still improve your math skills just by learning how this is done. Part of the reason why I'm doing this is to help solidify my own knowledge. And also why I started learning this is because lately I've been researching hex grids. Lots of games use them and this would be a great addition to my standard grid system. I'm also planning to include hex grids as a free update to my turn-based strategy course. And I thought that to make that work, I needed to figure out the math to test if a point is inside a certain hex position. However, actually that is not the case. For a hex grid you really just need a basic distance check, but still I wanted to learn how to test if a certain point is inside a hex and learn all of the math behind it. So here I won't cover that, and then for the other specific scenario, converting a square grid into a hex grid, for that I won't cover it in the next video. Here I just want to get a point and test if it's inside a certain hex shape. So let's do this. Over here is my hex shape. Now I drew this basic sprite in Photoshop. Photoshop has a tool for drawing perfect hexagons. You can just go and use the polygon tool, right here, this one. Then on the options, under star ratio, just pick 100. For number of sides, pick 6. And then if you just click, it shows up a nice little window, so you can make a perfect 100 by 100 hexagon. And yep, there it is. Then you can simply rotate it if you want a pointy top or a flat top. Okay, so this is my hexagon. Now for the shape, here it is on the metrics. I define a certain size, which is used both for the width as well as the height. Then the distance from the center to the sides, this is half the size. It's the same thing as the distance from the center point to the bottom or the top. Then for all of the corners here, the upper and lower are just offset by half the size, so that's simple. But these corner ones, to get to this one, we need to move to the right by half the size and then move up by only a quarter of the size. Whereas this one right here, go to the right and then down by a quarter. Then for the names, over here is the upper corner, down here the lower corner, then the upper right corner, upper left, lower left, and lower right. Again, pay attention to the coordinates on all of these points, like how this side is to the right of the center point by half the size, and specifically how these corners, they are up by a quarter of the size. These values are going to be very important when doing the actual math. So for testing, here is my scene. I just have my sprite, it's positioned on 0, 0, 0, and it has a standard scale of 1, 1, 1. I just flipped it 90 degrees on the x in order to make sure that it is on the x, z axis. Again, like I mentioned, all the math used here can be used in either 3D or 2D. The only difference is really whether you're using the XZ axis or the XY axis. Then I also got my standard mouse 3D script. So I can play the game and I got a nice cursor following the mouse. If you don't know how to get the mouse position, go watch my video on that topic. So with that, let's begin making our script. So let's create a brand new C Sharp script. Call it test point inside hexagon. Let's make a game object to run this and attach the script. Now here, the first thing we're going to do is create a structure where we can store all of our hexagon corners so that we can later do some math. So let's put up here a public class called hexagon. Now, quick note, of course, we could make this class in a separate file. The only reason why I'm writing it here is just so it's easier to read the code for both the testing and the hexagon. So here, let's store all of our corner positions as well as half the size. So first a public float for the half size. Then let's go with vector three for all the corners. So the upper right corner, then the upper left corner, then the other ones. All right, so here's all the data that we need to define our hexagon. We've got half the size, the center point, and all the various corners. All right, now let's make a constructor. So public hexagon. And on our constructor, let's receive a float for the half size, and let's also receive a vector3 for our center point. All right, now based on just this, we can calculate all of the other corners. So let's first calculate the top and bottom, which are super simple. So for the top one, so that's the upper corner, 
For this one, we're going to take the center point and we just want to move it on the Z and we want to move it by half the size. So let's add plus new vector three, zero, zero, one, and move it by half the size. Again, going back into our hex shape, here we've got the center point, so we want to move up by half the size. And again, the only difference between 2D and 3D is here, instead of using XZ, you would use XY, and perhaps instead of using vector threes, you'd use vector twos. Okay, so that's the corner, and for the lower corner, this one is also super simple. We just take that and just move down by minus one on the Z. Okay, so with this, we already have this working. Let's do a quick test just to verify. Now, one way to log this would be to add a manual debug.log on each one of these. That would be quite a lot of work, so let's do something a bit faster. Let's go up here into our testing script. Let's first make a private void start. On start, let's construct our hexagon. Let's put it on new vector three of zero, zero, zero. And let's give it a half size of 0.5F so that the total size is one F. Now, like I said, for debugging, instead of printing all the values, one thing we can do is let's use the JSON utility and convert to JSON and convert this object into JSON and do a log on this one. So just an easy way of printing out all of the various fields. If you don't know what is JSON, you can watch my quick explainer on it, pretty simple. So here, let's see what this prints. All right, so here's our log, and let's see the half size is indeed 0.5, that is correct. The center point on 0, 0, 0, that is correct. And then for the upper corner, it is on 0, 0, and 0 0.5, yep. And the lower corner is on 0, 0, minus 0 0.5, which we can also verify over here since it has the exact same size, exact same shape as this one. So we can create a new empty game object and we can position it. Let's make sure it's on zero on the Y and just move it over here to this corner. And yep, zero, zero minus 0 0.5 and this one, zero, zero plus 0 0.5. Okay, great. So both those corners are working correctly. Now let's calculate those corner positions. So referring back to our size reference here, in order to get this upper right corner, we need to start from the center point. We need to move to the right by half the size and then move up by a quarter of the size. So another way of getting a quarter of size is really half the half size. So let's do that. Over here, let's find that. So the upper right corner, we start from the center point, then we move to the right. So one, zero, zero. We move to the right by half the size, and then we move up. So new vector three, zero, zero, one. And we're going to move up by a quarter of the size or really half the half size. So half size times 0.5F. All right, so that should do it, let's see. Okay, here's our log. Let's see the upper right corner. It is on 0 0.5, 0 0.25. So again, we can verify. Let's create an empty game object. Let's put it on a Y of zero and then just move it roughly over there and see if it is correct. Yep, 0 0.5, 0 0.25. All right, awesome. So our math is all working correctly. Now let's do that for pretty much all the other points. So up here, let's copy that. So we've got the upper and left corner. Then we've got the lower right corner and the lower left corner. Now for the upper left corner, we move based on the center point, we move to the left, whereas this one we were moving to the right, okay? Then we also move up, that is correct. Then for the lower right corner, we move to the right, yep, and the lower left move to the left, but then on the lower right corner, instead of going plus one on the Z, we go minus one and minus one. All right, so that's it. Let's see if all of our logic worked. Okay, there's our log, let's see, so the center point on 0, 0, 0, that is correct. The upper right corner, 0 0.5, 0, 0.25, yep. Then the upper left is on minus 0 0.5 and 0.25, yep, that is correct. Then the lower right corner, 0 0.5, minus 0 0.25, minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.25. Okay, great. So all of the points are correctly positioned. Now that we have this, we can finally start running some basic logic. So on our testing script, let's go up here, let's make a simple private void update and let's just make the hexagon a member variable. So private hexagon for our hexagon and we just set it down, okay. So we have our hexagon and now over here on the update, let's first test just if we are inside the horizontal bounds. So we need to get the mouse wrong position. So again, I'm going to use my super helpful script that I made in a previous video. Get the mouse wrong position. So we're going to test if the mouse wrong position dot x if this one is less than one of the right corners, so we can use the upper right or upper left. So let's go the upper right corner. So that's inside the hexagon, the upper right corner, and we grab the X. So if it's to the left of that one, and if it's to the right, so let's copy this. If the X is bigger than the upper left corner, if so, then it's inside the horizontal bounds. 
Here, and let's just do a vector three for the test position. Just so we use this one instead of that one. All right, so that's our busy code. Now, just for testing, let's add a nice visual just so we don't have to look in the log and we have a more visual view. Let's grab a reference to the mouse game object renderer. So let's make it a serialized field in private. Use a mesh render for the mouse mesh render. Then let's also have a field for a material. Let's say green material. And then also a red material. Then if we are inside, so if we are inside the bounds, let's set this one to material equals the green material. And if not, then let's put on the red. So let's put it up here. So this one, the red material. Okay, so we set the red material. Then if it's inside the horizontal bounds, we change it to the green material. So here in the editor, let me just drag the reference of that one and then also the mouse green and the mouse red. Okay, let's test. So here we are with the mouse outside and it is in red. Okay, correct. And if I move inside, yep, there you go, green. And if I go outside, yep, back to red. All right, so the horizontal bounce is indeed working. Now, the next thing we want is vertical testing. So if we go above the upper point over here, it should be red as well as down here. So let's do that. Now that is going to be super simple. It's pretty much the same thing. So let's actually copy this and put it inside. So for this one, let's test the Z on the test position. And instead of the upper right corner, let's use the upper corner. So it has to be under the upper corner.z and it has to be above the lower corner.z. So this is inside the vertical bounds. Okay, let's see. All right, outside is red, inside is green. Now if I go outside in there, and there you go, nice and red and nice and green. All right, so the basic bounding box is indeed working. Now let's get to the complex part, which is related to the diagonals. Right now, if I'm here outside diagonal, but still inside the vertical and the horizontal, over here says green, where it should be red. So what we need to test is test if the test position is on this side or this side of this line. Now, thankfully, this was actually pretty easy for me to learn how to do because I already researched an interesting game mechanic that relies on the exact same logic, the backstab mechanic that I covered in a previous video. For that one to work, I need to test if the player was behind the enemy, and when researching that topic, that's when I learned about the vector 3 dot product. It basically tells you if a vector is pointing in the same or opposite direction of another vector. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We basically have this line here. And in order to test which side our test point is, we just need to grab this direction. So we're going to calculate the direction from the upper right corner to the upper corner, and we get this direction vector. Then with that vector, we're going to apply a 90 degree rotation, and we're going to end up with a vector pretty much like this. Then all that's left is just getting our test point, calculating the direction towards the test point, and doing the dot product between this vector and this vector. Okay, so let's do this. For that, first let's calculate this vector and then this vector. So here, let's define a vector 3. Let's call it the direction from the upper right corner to the upper corner. Now this is a super worthy name, but I can't think of a better name that would be equally as descriptive and compact. Again, you should always value readability over compactness. So I'm okay with having a super long name as long as it's super accurate. So I have this and for this one, we just go into the hexagon, grab the upper corner and subtract the hexagon dot upper right corner. So you grab this vector. So with that, we have this vector and now we need to apply a 90 degree rotation to end up with this vector. Now for applying a 90 degree rotation, thankfully for that, I have a super useful function in my utilities, which you can download from unitycodemonkey.com. Here I've got a function to apply a rotation to a vector on the XZ plane. So really just taking the quaternion Euler with a certain angle multiplied by the vector. So over here, I'm going to use that function. So let's apply the rotation to the vector. The rotation is going to be this direction vector. And for the angle, the way unity works is actually clockwise. So what we want is minus nine degrees. So this is going to be the vector three. Let's call this the dot direction upper right corner. Now, just with this, let's do a quick log, just to make sure that all of our math is working correctly so far. So let's do a debug.log first on this one, and then also on this one. Okay, so let's see if these two are correct. All right, so here it is, and we can see the direction from the upper right corner, that is this one, going to the upper one is minus 0.5 and plus 0.25, that is correct. And the one that is perpendicular, that one is going minus 0.25 and minus 0.5, which, yep, doesn't look to be correct. Okay, so the next thing we need is the direction pointing from the upright corner towards the test point. 
So over here, that's a vector three for the direction from the upper right corner to test point. And this one is symbol, so test point minus the hexagon dot upper right corner. And with these two directions, all that's left is the dot product. So let's do a vector three dot. Let's use the dot direction upper right corner and the dear from upper right corner to the test point. And in order to make sure that the dot works correctly being between minus one and plus one, let's normalize these vectors just like this. Okay, so let's do a debug.log to see what this says. And let's also make the visual based on this one. So let's do if this one is above zero, if the dot product is above zero, make it green. Okay, let's test. So here we are, and if I'm on this side, it's red, and on this side, yep, it turns green. So red, green, yep, it does seem to work. And we can see on the console there, if we are on this side of the line, then we have negative numbers, and on this side, we get positive numbers. And the closer we are to where the actual vector is facing, the closer it is to plus one, and on the other side would be minus one. All right, so the logic for this specific corner is already fully working. So on the right, it is red. Inside, we have green. If we are past the vertical, it is red. Then here it is green. And on this diagonal, if it is on this side, red. And here, green. So everything perfectly working. Now, that's left is really just apply the same logic to all the other diagonals. So let's do that. We just need to do the exact same math for all the corners. So let me quickly do that. All right, so here is all the code, pretty much just copy pasted the exact same logic. The one important thing is over here when applying the rotation to the vectors. So again, back to this, we have this vector, we apply minus 90 degrees and we end up with this vector. So this one is minus 90 degrees because unity goes clockwise. But then on this one, we can lay this vector right here. So we have that one and if we get minus 90 degrees and we end up with this one, that is not what we want. We want this one, so that is why on that one we need to apply plus 90. So here on the dot direction for the upper left corner, let's put plus 90. Then for the lower left corner, we've got this vector. And in order to get this one, we are going counterclockwise. So this one is minus 90. And then finally for this one, in order to get this direction, we need plus 90. So the dot tier on lower left, this one is minus 90. And the dot tier on lower right, this one is plus 90. Here you can pause the video if you're following along, or you can just download the project files link in the description. Okay, so let's test, and here we've got the dot product, just to make sure everything is working, so let's see. So here we are, and we can see the logs, so first the dot upper right corner, on the outside we've got minus, and over here we've got positive, okay, now for the dot upper left, so on the upper left over here we've got minus, and we got plus, then the dot lower right, over here we have plus, and we have minus, and the final one, over here plus, and over here minus. So yep, all the logic is correct, so if all of them are positive, then we are indeed inside the hex shape. All right, so here we are. Now, first of all, if we are outside on the horizontal, here we have red, we go inside and we have green. Then if you go outside through this side, yep, that is red. And if you go above, yep, red, if we have green, and over here green, go outside and we have red. Then for diagonals, if we are here green, and on this side we are red, then green, red, over here green, red, and green, red. All right, awesome. So everything is working on all sides. So we can always test if a certain point is inside our hexagon or not. With this, all of our logic is fully working, so this is how you can test if a point is inside a hex using nothing but math. So there's no physics, no recasts, just some basic math. And by learning this, you also hopefully leveled up your own math skills just like I did, learning how to test if a point was on one side or another side of a certain diagonal line. For me, as someone with very basic math skills, I'm pretty happy that I managed to learn that. So here's the code for how to test if a certain point is inside a certain hex shape. Now, like I said, the reason why I researched this is because I'm researching how to make a hex grid, so I'll be covering that in the next video. And after that, I will also be taking the results of my research and making a free expansion to my turn-based strategy course, converting that game, that code base into a hex grid. If you don't have the course yet, check it out with the link in the description. It's a great course, it will teach you how to massively improve your programming skills and take you from beginner to advanced. And if you already have it, then this hex grid update will be a completely free expansion to the course, hopefully within the next few weeks. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.